Hi, you're listening to Immigrant Women Talk Podcast and I'm your host, Galina Bileyeva. This is the place for you to get inspired by stories of immigrant women, to learn about nonprofits that serve immigrant communities, and to listen to entrepreneurs who work with women in developing countries. Subscribe to this podcast and get more inspiration and resources at immigrantwomentalk.org. Hi, I'm Galina Bileyev and my guest today is Blair Brad Schneider. And at 24, Blair has made it her mission to help young refugee girls adjust to life in the United States. That's why she runs an organization, Girl Forward. And Girl Forward was recently featured on CNN and Blair was named a CNN hero. Welcome, Blair. Really excited to be talking to you. Thank you for having me. (laughs) So, Blair, what services do you provide to young refugee girls? And exactly um, who are the girls that you mentor? Where do they come from? So, we have three main programs. We do a mentorship program where we match uh, refugee girls in high school with women mentors in Chicago who meet with them once a week for at least a year and help them set and achieve their goals. Um, We have a summer program that's an academic program called Camp Girl Forward, um, where the girls meet during the week, and we have a teacher who does an academic curriculum with them to help them build their English skills and um, fill gaps that they've experienced in their education. And then we have a third program that includes a few different components called the Safe Spaces Project, Um, That includes our program center that's in a neighborhood on the north side of Chicago where most of our girls live, Um, a small in-school program that we recently started um, with younger girls in um, fourth through sixth grade. Um, And yeah, so the girls that we work with are between the ages of 12 and 21. Most are in high school, so 14 to 19 years old. And they're refugees from a lot of different countries. We have girls from Iraq, from Congo, um, Ethiopia, Somalia, Burma, and several others. Are they mostly refugee girls or do you help other uh, immigrant girls as well? The vast majority um, have been resettled as refugees. We do have a few girls who are asylees and uh, one or two who are immigrants. Okay. You know, actually, I saw uh, a picture from your office. It's so cool. I, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought, oh, my God, I would definitely want to hang, hang out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a, you know, like very good place with uh, good energy, very safe. Uh, I yeah. Think very positive. Really liked it. It's blue walls and um, mm-hmm. orange kind of uh, curtains, right? Yeah. Did Then you... we have some some lights. <laughs> Was that? Yes. Yeah, Lots some... of pillows and rugs and. It doesn't look like a a, a center. It looks like home, and um, I'm sure girls love it. Did you come up? Yeah, we wanted to make sure that it was warm and a place that they would want to come to, especially because most of our girls share, you know, their bedrooms with um, brothers, sisters, grandparents. They don't have a lot of their own space. And, you know, I was fortunate when I was growing up and I think some of our mentors and volunteers probably have the same experience where I had my own room. So when I wanted to by myself, when I wanted to do my own thing, I could just go in my room and I had books and I had a computer and our girls don't have that. Um, and so that's what we wanted to provide them in our program center. Awesome. Well, you're doing it great. Did you come up with the design yourself with the interior design? Um, a little bit. We had some help. Um, the colors that we painted are, are co- the colors of our logo. The girls helped paint the walls. Um, and then a lot of it just kind of happened as we went on. So, We were lucky to get some of our furniture donated. Um, Our couch was from Craigslist, and then we have a lot of photos everywhere. So it's just kind of a, it changes as time goes on. (laughs) All right. Uh, Blair, why did you feel so passionate about helping young girls who you probably had nothing in common with? You know, it's completely different culture, uh, language, different traditions and family, family circumstances. Mm-hmm. And they probably communicate also in a different style. So how, how were you able to relate 
to them and to understand their problems? Well, um, when I moved to Chicago after graduating from college, um, I was working at a refugee resettlement agency and I started tutoring a girl who was 18 at that time and she was a refugee from Burundi. And so I became really close with her and sort of became her mentor. Um, and so we would do homework, but also talk about her future and what she wanted to accomplish, but there wasn't really anything in place to help her get there. None that no one in her family had been to college. I mean, she was the first after a year, um, of us working together, she was the first person in her family to graduate from high school. So there was really nothing showing her, you know, what steps she needed to take to get to reach her goals. And so I worked with her and that really was inspiring to me and taught me a lot about what girls face when they are resettled in Chicago and in any city in the United States. Um, and so one of my friends and I started a small group for the girls that were served through that one particular agency. And we would just meet on Fridays and talk about whatever's on their mind. We had a couple of speakers come in, um, but, the, and they loved that because they got to, you know, make friends from different countries um, who at the same time had things in common with them, but they also, you know, the other girls wanted that one-on-one -on -one support that Domi was getting, having a mentor. So um, to seeing how much she benefited from support and seeing how excited the girls were about learning and making friends and really how motivated they were. That was, you know, that was really inspiring to me to see all these girls who really just wanted more than anything to be able to reach their goals. Right. Blair, so what do you think is the purpose of a mentor? A mentor does a lot of things. Um, I mean, in the short term, our mentors meet with girls and sometimes they're working, helping them work on school projects. Um, but it's also someone that they can talk to that's not, you know, a family member. They, The girls oftentimes feel more comfortable talking to their mentors about some of the, I guess, more American things that they face in school. Because even though, you know, our, most of our girls are fairly close with their parents or they have great relationships with their moms, you know, their mom maybe ha ha probably hasn't been in high school or even definitely not high school in the United States. And there's things that go along with that, that our mentors understand because they went through that. Um, and so I think, you know, it's someone who will listen, you know, give some guidance and be a positive example for them. I read that, um, uh your professional life was very much influenced by two organizations that you used to work at. Um, mm -hmm. It's 826 Michigan and mm -hmm. Heshimakania. Yeah. <laughs> Hope I am uh -huh. saying that correctly. Um, yeah. So could you please share your experience working at those organizations What and what they do exactly? Sure. Um, well, I was an intern at 826 Michigan, and there's 826 chapters in several cities in the United States, and it's a literacy organization. They do they focus a lot on writing. Um, and at 826, I had just graduated from college, and I was only there for a short time. Um, so I, did, I didn't really have that big of an impact on the organization, but it definitely had an impact on me because I learned a lot about fundraising, about volunteers. Um, and it was very – it was small when I – was there. There were only two full-time staff members. And so I learned a lot about what it was like to be at a small organization. And, um, but also it was really inspiring because they had come a really long way just in the short time that they'd been around. And then Hashima was where I worked. It was my second job in Chicago. And that's the last thing I was doing before I started working for Girl Forward full-time. Um, and it's an organization that has an office here in Chicago, but the programs are in Nairobi, and they provide shelter and education um, to refugee girls and women in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, when I was working there, I learned a lot more about just refugee issues in general. Um, I learned more about programming that's specific to girls and kind of the movement that is... Um, just this push to empower girls around the world. And I got a lot of my ideas for Girl Forward and the things we needed to do with our girls from both Hashima and the other organizations that were sort of part of that community um, in like Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, like those um, 
regions, there's a, a lot more focus on empowering girls than really in the United States, I think. And so I think there's a lot to be learned from the organizations that are working in those areas. Right. You know, I've read about a great uh, writing exercise that you do at Girl Forward, and I actually want to try it myself. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's an exercise at writing when you draw six sections on a piece of paper and then you choose a story mm -hmm. idea for each. Uh, so why do you think it's important for girls to do this exercise? Uh, how does it help them with their in, in life? What kind of skills does it develop? We've been doing this recently with a few of our um, senior high, sc high school senior girls who are applying to college. And it's because a lot of times it's difficult for our girls and I, probably any girl or student in high school to really understand and tell their story. Um, and our girls, can sometimes they struggle with that when, you know, they're writing a college essay and the question is either, you know, tell us about yourself or you know, tell us about your life, why you think you should go here, go to the school. Um, the girl, sometimes they don't always see the full picture or it's hard to, for them to really recognize all of the great things that they've done or the role, you know, the leadership roles that they've had in their families or in their lives. And so we ask them to do this, that they don't just think of the first thing that comes to mind. Um, so they'll write down Uh, these different pieces in the box and then we'll go through and talk about um, like what those things mean and try to get them to think sort of outside of their regular pattern of just this is who I am and this and this and this. So it just helps them be a little more creative in telling their story and understanding their story a little bit more. Right, and having a bigger picture of mm -hmm. how, you know, how much they have done, they have accomplished really. Right. Blair, how did you start getting funding uh, for Girl Forward? Well, in the very beginning, before we were a 501c3 organization, which is what you need to be to really apply for grants, um, I just did some online fundraising with friends and family and told them what I was doing. And we started out very small. Um, and then as soon as we had our 501c3 status, I just started applying for grants. And we got our our first grant for $6,000 from AAUW and that supported the first summer of our summer program. So, you know, I just, I applied for a lot of grants and we were able to get support because no one else was doing what we were doing and it was interesting and, um, you know, we organized and had a lot of information about why it was important to invest in programs for the girls that we're serving. So grants and then really just trying to get out and meet people in Chicago, tell them about our work, have some events, and went on from there. We just try to communicate the success that we've had so far. Um, and it is difficult sometimes, too, because we're a small organization and we're never going to say, you know, and this year we had a million girls in our mentorship. You know, it's a small program. And so we just focus on telling individual stories and connecting the people who support us with the girls that we serve and helping them to get to know them and what their contribution means, um, you know, and saying that. A hundred dollars doesn't sound like a lot, but for us, a hundred dollars is a CTA pass for a girl attending camp, and they use these CTA passes every single day, and it helps them get to and from camp. And then after camp, they can also use it if they are, you know, if they work or if they want to volunteer. So it really opens up the entire summer for them, where otherwise they would be very isolated. So for us, because we're small, even small donations really go a long way for our programs. Right. Um, Blair, how do you, um, how did you become a nonprofit? Uh, did it take you a lot of time and paperwork um, to do that? Um, a little bit. There's the major form that you have to fill out is to become a 501c3 tax exempt organization. That's the longest piece of, that's, that's like the biggest thing you have to do. And then everything else, It's pretty straightforward, and I just did a lot of reading online and figured out what we needed to submit, and I, it only took, you know, in the very beginning, a few forms and maybe a month or so to kind of get all of that straightened out, and then we just had to wait until the IRS 
thing went through, which took a couple months. But um, yeah. So overall, it took you less uh, less than six months. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing that, um, Blair. So, uh, how do you how do you plan activities uh, for um, you know the next year or for a season? Do you have a structure for a mentoring session that um, that everybody follows? Yeah, so our mentors are given a binder that has information about our curriculum. So every month, um, the mentors and their mentees, they set a month-long goal. They also have a goal for the year, so something they're working towards all year. So they do that, and then every time they're meeting and talking about, you know, how they're meeting their goal, what steps they need to take. And then we also we have activities, so... The mentors and the girls, they earn points for doing certain activities, and we have different categories so that they're not just all doing homework all the time. We want them to have a well-rounded experience. So they get points for doing things related to finances, related to health, um, and we have ideas in our in the binders that we give our mentors and the girls um, of things that they can do together. And then at our program center, we have workshops every month, and those change So every month we have something new and we just set a schedule at the beginning of the year and decide what, you know, what we did last year, what we want to repeat or what new things we want to try. Awesome. Blair, that was my last question. Thank you so much for taking oh, time. Thank to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, it was really great to have you. And I wish you and the girls with the Girl Forward all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Immigrant Women Talk podcast. I would love to get to know you, so come over to immigrantwomentalk.org and leave a comment. Let me know about your challenges and I will find an expert who will offer a solution. If you would like to join the community of immigrant women, connect with the guests or with me, go to immigrantwomentalk.org. I'm Galina Bileva and I will talk to you next time.